this pamphlet has everything to do with the challenges that CIs pose to academic freedom and integrity in the United States and elsewhere. It has nothing to do with animus to the PRC as such, the Chinese people, or with some sort of deranged anti-communism. The first matter then is self-censorship. And the first incident concerns North Carolina State University. A scheduled visit in 2009 of the Dalai Lama was canceled by the interim chancellor of North Carolina State University, Jim Woodward, <coughs> ostensibly because there had been insufficient time to prepare for such an august guest. The director of the NC State Confucius Institute, Bai Lian Ling, a forestry professor, got involved <clears throat> after the cancellation, he said, as a warning for the future, telling the provost that a visit by the Dalai Lama could disrupt, quote, some strong relationships we were developing with China. In this connection, the provost, Warwick Arden, observed that a Confucius Institute presents, quote, an opportunity for subtle pressure and conflict, end quote. <clears throat> what he didn't say was that North Carolina, sta North, the state of North Carolina has a lot of business associations with China, and it is the state legislature that, fun that funds NC State, of course. In an interview with me, Ted Foss, the deputy director of the Center for East Asian Studies at the University of Chicago, observed, with regard to possible discussions of Tibetan independence, the Tiananmen Massacre, or Falun Gong at the Chicago Confucius Institute, he said, I think there is a certain amount of self-censorship. Instead, he said, there is money for that kind of discussion at the Center for East Asian Studies. This is a very interesting principle, which you could call uh, something like permissible censorship or allowable censorship which is, in my mind, something like a woman who says she's just a little bit pregnant. In other words, censorship can be found in so anywhere in the university as long as there's somewhere where it isn't, where everything is permissible. The same sort of, sort of statement, you can always do that elsewhere, what we can't do here, is a common refrain among CI directors. The Dean of the School of Arts and Humanities at the University of Texas, Dallas, Dennis Krantz, when asked if he would seek Hanban funding for a conference on Tibet, said, if I would do a conference on something like that, I would have multiple places where I'd look for funding, <laughs> not from Confucius Institutes. The Deputy Director of the Confucius Institute at Erlangen, Nuremberg in Germany, Michael Lackner says, Quote, Confucius Institutes are not necessarily the right place for debates on topics pertaining to touchy subjects like Tibet. Better to leave sub such, such subjects to Chinese studies departments. So you see, there's something like self-censorship in Confucius Institutes. Meru Liu, the director of the CI at Portland State University in America, in response to a critical press report on Confucius Institutes, said that her institute has sponsored lectures on Tibet. And she goes on to explain what those lectures are. Her lectures on Tibet, done in the Confucius Institute, were done with, quote, an emphasis on the beautiful scenery, customs, and tourist interests. She said that we've also invited speakers to give lectures that cover such topics as China's economic development, currency, U.S.-China relations, <coughs> and topics related to Chinese military, environmental, and sustainable relations. But she didn't say what emphases were in those lectures. We did, she did say, <coughs> however, that, <coughs> that we, quote, I, we try not to organize and host lectures on certain issues related to Falun Gong, dissidents, and the 1989 Tiananmen protests. For one thing, she said, these are not topics the Confucius headquarters would like to see organized by the Institute. 
These are we're going to do what they don't want, <coughs> what they tell us uh, we shouldn't do. We, we won't do. For another thing, she said, they are not of major interest and concerns to the general public at large in the United States. In a directive issued by the Chinese Communist Party to local committees in May 2013, China's top propaganda officials banned the discussion of seven topics on the grounds that they were dangerous Western influences, urging the local cadres to enforce the ban on universities and media. Uh, this was issued by China's top propaganda officials. If you'll remember from the last discussion, they are in charge of Confucius Institutes through the Communist Party in apparatus. The seven dangerous topics that, the, that universities and, and um, media should not talk about were universal values, freedom of speech, civil society, civil rights, the historical errors of the Chinese Communist Party, crony capitalism of Chinese officials, and judicial independence. The ban was immediately protested as the seven speak nots by a political scientist at East China University of Political Science and Law on his own website. As several of these topics, as, as he pointed out, had been openly discussed in universities for years. But his post was just as quickly deleted, and thereupon the censors, in effect, made discussions of the seven speak knots an eighth speak knot. You know, it's a kind of Orwellian newspeak going on. It not only stands to reason that these topics would be unwelcome in Confucius Institutes <coughs> as well, it is well now and well now inevitable that they would not be welcome, since the directive, as I say, was issued through the same propaganda apparatus of the Chinese Communist Party that controls <coughs> the policies of Confucius Institutes. Perry Link, who is a emeritus professor of China studies at Princeton University and presently at the University of California, Riverside, commented on these matters in a way that indicates that there are more than seven or eight speak knots. I will be persuaded, he said, by an objection, I will not be persuaded by an objection that says that the June 4th Tiananmen example is an extreme and therefore negligible case, and that there are plenty of other things to talk about in bustling big China. I will not be persuaded, because if we rule out not just June 4th, but all the other, quote, sensitive issues, Xinjiang, Tibet, Taiwan, Falun Gong, Occupy Central in Hong Kong, the Nobel Peace Prize, the spectacular private wealth of leaders, families, the cynical arrests of rights advocates, and sometimes their deaths in prison, and more. We are left with a picture of China that is not only smaller than the whole, but crucially different in nature. 